digital multimeter, Bluetooth speaker, voice command. Oh man, this meter does it all. This is also the SE second edition. Um, that means it's new and improved, at least it should be, and you know what, it definitely is. Has a couple of really cool features I will get to in just a minute. So what do you get them? Of course you get that gorgeous Bluetooth speaker slash multimeter. As well, you get your user manual and some test leads. Now these test leads are not your regular test leads because look at that, yeah, we have a button and that is for the voice activation. I'll show you how that works in a bit. All in all, these are really nice test leads, a big, they are PVC, they're not silicone, but still they have a really nice feel, good grip to them. Uh, Cat 3, 1000 volts, Cat 4, 600, uh, just feel really nice in the hands. Of course, that uh, multimeter manual, all in English, lots of verbose settings, configuration, and of course, because this does some pretty cool things, it tells you how to do them. 20,000 counts as well, 20,000 count desktop multimeter. Oh, loving it. We got a double whammy of desktop multimeters here. This is the uh, first edition Zoe, the standard 5566. Of course, this is the new and improved 5566 SE from Zotec. Um, wow, whoa, good looking meters. They both have that reverse EBTN display as you can see, both are 20,000 count. Um, there are some subtle differences though. I have noticed for instance that the speaker inside of the SC version just sounds richer, deeper. The bass just seems to be a little bit more pronounced. Maybe it's just me, but it definitely seems to sound better on the SE. As well, I didn't experience any weird, funky uh, Bluetooth configuration uh, routines or, you know, dropping connections, none of that stuff. No, thus far, the SE has proven to be totally reliable in the world of Bluetooth, and we all know that's definitely a hard thing to do. Is this a showdown or what? In terms of connectivity on the back, nothing has changed. We still have that power button. We have our mode select. We have the up and down. That can bring up or down the display brightness. And of course, we can adjust between Celsius and Fahrenheit for the temperature. We have our uh, DC 5 volt uh, input here. And yes, you can charge and uh, listen to music, take measurements all at the same time. Groovy. Also, we have a QR code here. Just scan it with your phone and bada boom, bada bing, you will download that multimeter front end Bluetooth software. Yeah, this is really good looking unit. We have those nice big bold digits, super easy on the eyes. And once again, you can change the brightness output. So if you like it dimmer or brighter, you definitely can. Of course, the brighter you go, the quicker you're gonna use up that rechargeable battery. And yes, it does come with batteries. Unlike the first uh, unit I received, the 5566 from Zoe, the Zotec does come with those rechargeable 18650s. Good stuff. Only a niche product and not a cheap one. Uh, this is probably gonna be retailing for around upwards of $150 US uh, thereabouts. So yeah, it is not a cheap meter, but man, you do get a lot of bang for your dollar. And as mentioned, we do have two lithium ion 18650 3.7 volt batteries that are included with the Zotec. Unit itself is really high quality, good grade plastics. Um, you couldn't really expect more. We have some adjustable uh, layered feet here. So you can bring up the level of your meter if you want to raise it just a bit. As well, we have some nice rubberized um, back ends here for the meter itself to stop it from moving back and forth on slippery surfaces. All in all, really good quality. All the buttons are soft touch, not just cheapy plastic. So they have that nice rubberized plastic as well. We have this rubberized housing to cover and protect that uh, USB out. All in all, uh, nice quality. If I had any complaints with this unit, just the fact that maybe those fingerprints and smudges are gonna show up really easily uh, on the black unit. Test leads also look a little bit different uh, on the back. Look at that. That is for that voice command activation. Uh, like so. We'll do the same with the common. In there, snug, like a nice quality test leads. Yeah, I wish they were silicon. That would just would have been the icing on the cake, but uh, oh well. Starting things off in DC volts. 
for the reference out right now, 5.003. So uh, very, very nice. Now to get that voice activation, all you do is you touch the button on that test lead like so. DC voltage 5.003 volt. And there you go, you get a reading. So that works in both voltage, AC-DC, as well as resistance. DC voltage 10.010 volt. This week's shout out goes to Indonesia. Salamat slang. Thanks for watching. Andy, of course. That voice activation can be a real showstopper for some people that might be too busy making measurements to look at the meter back and forth. So a very cool upgrade on the SE. Alrighty, next up is diode LED time. Here we go. Remember the voice activation does not work in this mode. Starting off with the standard diode. There's the output voltage looking good. Red LED, it is lit. Forward voltage drop. The yellow, same. The green, yes, also lit with that forward voltage drop. The blue, oh yes. And finally the white, beauty. So five out of five in terms of illumination and forward voltage drop. Output voltage in diode mode, 3.2 volts. Going into resistance now, test leads have about 0.05 of an ohm uh, resistance on those test leads. Now, another nice thing about this meter is the fact it has a 200 mega ohm uh, range in resistance. 200 mega ohm, that is And a there lot. we are. 1K. Oh, beauty. Let's try 10 ohm. Not quite as good. Finally, one ohm. Yeah, well, that's not too shabby. How about that dreaded 0.5 ohm resistor? Hey, look at that. 0.54 ish. Excellent. All right, it's continuity time. Oh, yeah. How will these Gigantormous default test leads fair. Well, let's find out. Three, two, one. If you go uber fast, it's gonna miss. If you go slow, it's definitely gonna hit. And it is loud and latched. Let's try the Pro Masters. Pro Masters, here we go. Oh yeah, definitely much quicker to latch. Yeah. Beauty, and loud too. Seventy-five point one decibels, maximum output volume and continuity. Yeah, that's pretty loud. Taking a closer look at that bar graph right now, um, it doesn't give us a refresh rate, but it's not the fastest and it ain't the slowest. It's not bad actually. It's usable. Right now we're in high current amps, 6.6 .6 amps. Will we have a high current alarm? And we do, good stuff. Bringing it back down. 2.14 coming in as 2.2. Just seems to be a tad high on the high current, but um, definitely usable. We are in the low milliamp range right now, sitting at 4.1 milliamps. Coming is at 4.095. Take it up to 4.9. Oh, so close. Let's bring it up to 8 milliamps. Even Steven, look at that, 8.01. Let's try 12 right on the button. 12.04, good stuff. Max it out now at 20 milliamps. And look at that, 20.07 milliamps. So in the low milliamp range, this thing rocks. Of course, this comes with that max min functionality. Hit the max button, and let's just see what we have for a maximum voltage. We'll stop here at 14.1 volts. Hit the min, and it tells us that the minimum we had was 5.1. Sounds amazing. Awesome. I'm telling you, rich, crisp bass. 
I know you're not gonna hear it the same way I do, but believe you me when I say this thing has got some oomph to it. Love it. Wow, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, so in a nutshell, if you want to listen to music while you're taking your measurements, you can with the 5566SE. I love it. Um, very cool. Lots of functionality here. And man, this thing, once again, I know I sound like a broken record, but it does sound really damn good. 120 volts, 119.7.6. And what is nice is we get that dual display, 60 hertz coming up right there. Um, true RMS. What more can you ask for? Capacitance now, this has a 10 millifarad, 10,000 microfarad rating. Take a quick peek, see how fast it is. So we're now in the millifarad range. 9.7 millifarad, so that wasn't Capacitor bad at all. Can it go the extra mile? I know, probably not, but why not try? And look at that. You see, you never know. So we are way over our threshold of 10 megas sorry, 10,000 uh, microfarad, sitting here now at 43 millifarad compared to the 10 millifarad that they're telling us this is capable of. So don't be afraid to stretch the limits of these test instruments sometimes, uh, you know, because, hey, you never know. So look at that. I'm gonna try, just for the heck of it, 100 millifarad. Already 100 millifarad. Put a smile on my face, wouldn't that be something? It's a millifarad range now. Remember, only 10 millifarad is what? Oh, wow, look at that, yes, yes. Oh, baby. It got there. Where did you go? Come back to Papa, don't be shy. Oh, wow, so it actually did get there. That's so weird. Let me just try that one more time. This is 100 millifarad. Yes, 98.85. Oh man, beauty. So, Uda, 10 times better than the stated spec in terms of capacitance, folks. There you go. So compared to your standard multimeter, um, this desktop version gives you such a, you know, an additional boost. I mean, uh, having that whole Bluetooth functionality and being able to listen to some tunes in the background while you're testing. Oh, brother, this is cool. Okay, let's take a quick peek on the inside. Already teardown time, it is. Here we go, let's start off with that PCB. Whoa, look at that, something sweet. Looking at a multimeter PCB, no matter what kind of multimeter comes from. Let's zoom in a little bit closer, shall we? Starting off over here on the side of the board, you can see it's split here. We have uh, some computer programming headers for factory calibration yeah, as well. Now this doohickey hanging out, that is our thermal sensor for the uh, temperature control. All that Bluetooth goodness comes from this little guy right here. That's the JL AC21BP, our main Bluetooth IC. And speaking of ICs, if we move down just a little bit, here is one of two LCD controllers. That is the ET6621S from uh, ETEC Microelectronics. We have two of those, one over there and one over here on the PCB. Those input jacks of the split variety, uh, they are double split with that nickel pullback on all of them. And they are recessed quite well into that plastic housing as well. Uh, nice sized current shunt. And we have two ceramic fuses. This is the high current 20 amp, 250 volt, six by 30. Here we have five by 20, 250 volt, 200 milliamp for the low current side. And sitting just adjacent to that milliamp fuse is a relay. And beside the relay, we have one lonely PTC right over there. And speaking of PTCs, that's all we have. So I'm not speaking of PTCs anymore. Beside it, we have the main IC. This is a, um, I believe it's a high contact uh, clone from that HY12 series, um, something like that. This is the DM1109EN, the main multimeter IC. Below that, we have our oscillator and of course that speaker. Generally speaking, um, we have a pretty well populated PCB um, with a mixture of SMD as well as through hole components over here. 
opposite side of the unit here, we have uh, two of these uh, clip-ons that go right into those headers there on the main PCB, and that is what makes contact with the rest of the housing, hidden right underneath the uh, plastic uh, housing here. I'm not gonna pull it apart any further than that now, but um, suffice to say that is where the speaker resides. Nice and clean, once again, that connectivity just by these two modules here onto the main PCB. Overall, what can I say, looking good, Put it back together, come back with my closing thoughts of the Zotec ZT5566SE. Oh man, this is a cool multimeter. Bench multimeter, desktop multimeter, whatever you wanna call it, it definitely does the trick. Definitely faster range, has a lot of useful ranges. And now look at that capacitance, 10 times the value that they claim. So that is definitely awesome. Now, what I don't really like is the fact that if you blow a fuse on this meter, Look out, Charlie, you're gonna have fun. Those fuses are way in the back. You need a really long screwdriver, something like this, to uh, get to the back of the unit. And uh, yeah, it's, it's problematic. So I definitely wish that fuse access would have been thought of a little bit better. Still at the end of the day, this is one cool multimeter. I've said it many, many times. Does everything you can ask for in a bench slash desktop multimeter. Has all the ranges, all the goodies, has that nice Bluetooth versatility with a pretty decent app that doesn't seem buggy at all. And man, listening to music while testing is very, very sweet. What can I say, Zotec, you definitely hit the nail on the head with the second edition. I gotta say, it is much improved. The Zotec ZT5566SE gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing. After you download the software from the QR code, click on that eBowl icon. I know, what a crazy name. Oh, what can we see? From there, you're gonna get a visitor logon prompt. Click on that and you're in. From there, we're looking at the management screen. It's hooked up to resistance right now, so that's what we're gonna look at. And whoa, wow, we got a lot of options, but don't worry, it's all good. First time users, click on Bluetooth DMM when you add a new device and you are set. Uh, let's take a look at that graphic analysis in resistance mode. Pretty darn sweet, isn't it? Oh yeah. Uh, gonna go up to say eight megs just so you get a general idea of what you're looking at. But all in all, you can chart graphs, you can plot to the whole nine yards and you can save to disk. Hey, that's pretty awesome.